What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another EU4 time lapse, and we got a simple one today, but I think it's gonna be a good one anyway. So, one of the biggest barriers that we find in EU4 with expansion in Europe is the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, that increased core cost reduction, the giant web of alliances, the boosted power of the emperor can be a big block for expansion. So today we got rid of it. Just straight up, every country that starts in the Holy Roman Empire has been eliminated. And with that, do make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We are on the path to 1,000. We got about 450 more subscribers to go. So if you watch these videos and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It does help me out a ton. With that, let's check out this time lapse. Early on, it looked like Burgundy actually was doing relatively good there for a minute. Poland, I expect to have a pretty good game because they don't have sort of the enemy they normally have to their west. Interesting that we've got England colonizing northern Germany, and then we've got France colonizing central Germany, and Spain colonizing southern Germany. What is this, like the Treaty of Tortellone, whatever, the one that uh, the Pope divided up the New World into sections for the colonizers? That's basically what just said. We've now got a northern, central, and southern Germany split between Spain, France, and England. Not hugely surprising, but still kind of cool. Danish Eastern Europe. My goodness, Muscovy had such a huge opportunity and got eaten by Denmark. That's crazy. Oriat looks like they are doing work on Ming. Brazil is just South America. It happens. Portugal is taking advantage of the lack of Germany and taking Africa. Also, can I point out right here... That, uh, one, the Ottomans had a great opportunity for expansion also. Really missed the bullet there. Ethiopia right now is due. I believe they just, yeah, they're winning wars in North Africa. They appear to be pushing back the Ottomans. And we've got a thick Poland. Poland took advantage of the fact that England can never hold territory outside of the islands. Poland is eating that British territory in northern Germany. And France just said, heck with Germany, let's just go take Africa. Ethiopia continues to expand. They have pushed into Asia Minor, but they are now fighting the Commonwealth in Asia Minor in the Arabic region for control. That is an interesting conflict going on there as the two of them have consumed everyone if you had cooch as a major player in india well you're lying because i did not see that coming denmark deciding to just not go scandinavia and be a giant denmark i am here for that there's the scandinavia that ming act that's a pretty aggressive we've seen ming go aggressive a couple of times now and the oriot really pushed them down and they just flipped the script there Portugal has just fled to southern Africa because France is just taking Europe now. Uh, Revolutionary Commonwealth has really sort of unified. No, never mind. I was going to say they unified the German region, but actually France is the one doing more of that. Scandinavia is getting kicked out of Denmark. We've got Oshega, Cascadia, and Brazil dividing up the New World between them. And unsurprisingly, Vyanyar is doing a solid run in India. Honestly, in uh, in the Persian region, I can't tell where Scandinavia ends and Ethiopia begins because, honestly, they're the exact same color. Japan's doing solid. They control Japan and Korea. So, I mean, that's solid. That revolutionary commonwealth is looking really, really good. France is basically everything Napoleon wanted. I feel so bad for Portugal. They fled to Africa and France is still pushing them back. I swear at this point, Spain's just sitting there surrounded by France, just being like, hey, shh, nobody knows we're here. Don't tell them. They're just trying to hide from that big blue blob that we've got there. Did Ethiopia just get a little win against France at the end there? Huh, that was interesting. And that brings us to 2988, the end of this time lapse. And honestly, not that surprising. You take out Germany, you would expect either France, Spain, or England to take advantage of that. France had the benefit of being right next to Germany, so it was a lot easier for them to hold their initial German gains. 
while also taking the initial German gains of others. It is interesting that England still owns Brittany, so that's something. I love this little bit of Spain in Russia, landlocked with 34,000 troops. Also, can we point out that Wallach is out here partying like it's 1444? It has been 1500 years and they still have the exact same border. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I had thought Ethiopia had colonized Madagascar, but nope, that's just another light blue country. It's nice to see here in Europe that Brittany's still just barely alive. Huh. They went the Portugal route and just decided to bounce. Um, we've got Sulu, Australia, Spanish, Australia, and then Australia that's actually New Zealand. Religious, unsurprisingly, the world is very Catholic. I'm a huge fan of that Coptic. As has happened in the last couple of videos, Asia is a mess, but I'm a huge fan of Tengri surviving and Coptic really working its way into India. Culturally, there is a lot of Spanish. That Spanish culture in South America, it looks like the Spanish culture in North America, there's Spanish culture where the Portuguese were, where the Spanish were, but French culture is in France, and it's Germany, and then there's some Spanish culture in Germany. One of the most interesting parts about the dynastic map mode is neither France, the Commonwealth, or England have dynasties. They all went democracies. So the development capital of the world is Paris with 327 development. Outside of that, it's about what you would expect, except for this random province in North America with 184 development. And finally, the great powers. We've got Revolutionary France with 14,890 development, Oshego with 6,968, Ethiopia with 5,199, Ming with 5,146, Revolutionary Commonwealth with 5,100, Scandinavia with 3,163, Ayatollah with 2,456, and wrapping up the great powers, we have Cascadia was 1,988 development. If you guys enjoyed this time lapse, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I have a lot of fun making these, so they are going to keep coming because I know that you guys are enjoying them. Let's continue that push to 1,000, and if you have an idea that you would like to see in a time lapse, I get a lot of ideas, so I cannot promise that I will get to all of them. And if I haven't gotten to it and I've said that I will get to it, leave the comment again. I've got a big backlog, and sometimes I also just forget. So do make sure to leave those comments with what you guys want to see. I'm trying to come out with these twice a week, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Wreath out.